Climate change is the surprising news that going about our ordinary lives, human beings are changing the planet at a planetary scale. In most areas of science, if the public gets worried, a lot of the specialists say, oh, I wish I could calm them down. This is the other way around. The specialists are more scared than the public. We could see a third or up to a third of species wiped out. The impacts on people could be equally as catastrophic, particularly in the developing countries. We will see massive changes in weather patterns, more extreme floods, storms, droughts, all over the world affecting millions of people. The principal cause of climate change is the increase in carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere, and the principal cause of that is the burning of fossil fuels. If we were to burn all the world's known resources of fossil fuels, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere would go up enormously, and we would be committed to dangerous climate change. And the sad fact is that that is exactly where the world is heading. How do we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we're putting into the atmosphere? Either burn less coal, oil, and gas just by what's called conservation or efficiency. Then you have renewables, there's nuclear power, and then can't we add something to the fossil fuel system so that the carbon dioxide doesn't go to the atmosphere? CCS is carbon capture and storage, and it's where you take a power station or an industrial plant that produces a lot of carbon dioxide, you separate out the CO2, you then transport it and inject it deep underground. Say you have a smokestack uh, coming out of a power plant or, or a chemical factory or a refinery, and uh, the idea is that you separate the carbon dioxide from the other gases that are coming out. And the way we do that is we uh, take um, basically liquid that uh, is really good at absorbing carbon dioxide, and then you can put it into pipelines, and then you can transport it. Uh, and then finally, you uh, go to a place where you've got a well, and that you then start to pump it underground, and that you put it into a formation that is a porous rock. What I have here, is a piece of rock, a piece of sandstone rock. We will store the CO2 about a kilometre underground in rock like this. We're not storing CO2 in vast caverns from which the CO2 might suddenly and catastrophically escape. So we're going to see, for the few, next few decades at least, quite a, a demand for natural gas, for oil, for transport, and even for coal. And I think that's where CCS comes into its own. It is the one technology that offers us hope of reducing the emissions from power stations, for example, for the next few decades as a bridging solution until the world energy system really does have time to move towards a lower carbon long-term future. This sounds easy and it can all be done, uh, but it is quite expensive. And those involved have to make big capital investments. At the moment we're having a phony debate around whether this technology will work, whether this technology won't work. Let's actually get it on the ground, see if it does work, and then we'll be all in a position to make a better judgement about what investments we need to make. The, the Altway project is actually the largest R&D project anywhere in the world underway at the moment in, in carbon dioxide. The other way you reassure people is, is to make sure the, the whole project is open. Um, so now he's doing it behind um, high walls and uh, in dark spaces. You know, you've, you've really got to tell people what's actually happening and give them an opportunity uh, to look around. I listen to them and their concerns and then bring them to the organisation and basically we work on a way of, of finding solutions as a whole, a group. Oh, I was uh, fairly cautious early on as to, you know, how it was going to affect our farm and the local community you know, in negative and positive ways. What we do is we try to explain to them that it's being actually injected into a depleted gas field. It has um, a, a large seal, a large rock seal on top. Um, and so, as we explained to them, methane gas has been down there for thousands and thousands of years and it hasn't come up, so we expect that the CO2 won't be coming up as well. With my two sons, we discussed it and we felt that uh, everything has got to start and we could be involved in something that was really worthwhile. As further it went along, I guess the more comfortable I felt, felt with that. We have a defined project, part of a pilot test, to drill two wells to take purified CO2, inject it into the ground, and monitor the physical changes that that CO2 undergoes. I have a, a degree in geology, and after that initial 
uh, information was presented, I went out and uh, did my own research, Con first confirmed the science behind it, really started drilling down and looking at what the geology of this area, and really developed a good sense for why Shell would have had an interest in this area. This is a real unknown for people. It's a new technology. It hasn't been proven, and there's very little awareness. So people are bound to be scared and concerned about it. The biggest fear is that carbon dioxide will leak out. And actually, I think that's one of the easier questions to answer, because the probability um, that that could happen is, is slim to none. CO2 is everywhere in the air. It's essential to all living things. It's part of our basic metabolic system. So from that perspective, is it poisonous? Well, no, of course not, because it's everywhere around. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, you have very concentrated carbon dioxide, say 100% carbon dioxide or 50% carbon dioxide, it is hazardous. And that's the purpose of monitoring. That's why if you're injecting carbon dioxide, you have a carbon dioxide monitoring uh, system at the top of your well. After site selection, I think monitoring is the second most important thing that we need to do. I see no uh, definite uh, risk associated you know, with a release or, or damage either to the surface um, soils or groundwater. Uh, the separation and the type of geology that we're talking about here uh, will absolutely uh, protect uh, this property. Uh, for thousands and thousands of years. For too long we've had debates and reports about carbon capture and storage. Um, we've seen some successes in the oil and the gas industry but we have yet to see it at scale in the power generation sector. Um, that's the key challenge and this is where we need industry and government and the broader community to be working together to fast track the deployment at commercial scale of these technologies. We've actually given investment sanction to two projects, one in Norway in partnership with the government there and with Statoil, the Norwegian oil company which will capture CO2 from a power station, and one in Australia where together with Chevron and Exxon we'll be putting together the world's largest CCS scheme to store more than three million tonnes a year of CO2 underground offshore Australia. Carbon capture and storage is absolutely essential. If we cannot get carbon capture and storage to work, and if we do not implement it in a major way very rapidly, then the world will be committed to dangerous climate change.